Hello, welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, and human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out. Unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now, here's your host, two-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kosowski. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Deborah Kosowski, and I have a very special guest for you. Our guest today is Lisa Mannion. Lisa is known as the business marketing architect, president of Right On Creative, and pioneer of a three simple value based three step challenge, solution, invitation framework to create marketing messages with integrity and improve all communications. Her methodology flips the script to focus on passion points and paint a picture of possibility instead of poking at the pain points. Her philosophies are featured in Inc. Magazine and multiple number one best-selling books, including Wonder Women, How Western Women Will Save the World. Recipient of the People's Choice Award at the California Women's Conference, Lisa has created training for small business centers and is available for speaking and training engagements. She offers copywriting training programs done with you web copy and strategy creation, content strategy plans, one-to-one, -one, uh, custom retained coaching, consulting, accountability agreements with focus on four core foundations of long-term business sustainability, messaging and copy, planning strategy, branding and image, and publicity PR. Her techniques are known to create a million dollar results, triple client investment when implementing her strategies, just one sale. <laughs> you can learn more about uh, at www.writeoncreative.com and ask specific questions via Ask Lisa section on her blog. Let me know if you need anything else from this beautiful woman that we had some technical difficulties, but now we are on a roll. Yes, we are. I'm so delighted to be here, Deborah. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to just start off. Tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you into the field that you're in. Absolutely. Well, I have multiple decades of experience in marketing, advertising, copywriting, publicity, uh, you name it, I've kind of done it. So I've worked for radio stations and advertising agencies, and I've always just had an absolute love for the written word. So in 2003, I decided to resign from the premier advertising agency that I was working for, and that's when Write On Creative was born. And I started really digging into the online scene and learning a lot about direct response copywriting and studying with really some of the very best people out there in the market. And so that's how I got started. I just had a passion to do things on my own terms and decided to, to do it. Very cool. And now there's no looking back. <laughs> no, definitely there isn't. And, and, you know, as you know, running a business is not for the faint of heart, but I would not trade it for the world. So speaking of that, I want you to kind of walk us through what were you thinking if and what were, was the feeling when you actually resigned for that job? Well, you know, it was, it was time. It was a really fast-paced environment, which I loved on many, many levels. And at the same time, what I realized was I needed to create my own opportunities in my own future because there was only so far that I could go. So I was a little bit nervous, but I also was really excited because I knew I had the experience and the know-how to set myself up for success by creating a really solid foundation. And something I will share with listeners, because this is a really important piece, is I didn't just drop everything and miraculously snap my fingers and start the business. I resigned. I had a non-compete at that agency for several years. So I could have done a buyout and started an agency, but that's not what I wanted to do. So instead, I took a part-time job in a completely unrelated field. And I built my business while working a part-time position elsewhere so that I would have that solid foundation. And one of the things that I often hear, and I bootstrapped everything, by the way, so I didn't go out and get business funding. I just used the knowledge and skills that I had and the connections that I had to build, build that. And one of the things that I like to, to share is 
you can do that, but I don't ever recommend just dropping everything and not having some way to support yourself while you're moving forward unless you get major funding or angel investor dollars or something like that. And there's a lot of people out there that will tell you, oh, just jump, you know, and then that will be there. And sort of, I think there's some truth to that, but you also have a real need to have a really clear plan and strategy in place. Yes. So what did you know you needed to put in place? What would you tell people if they were, you know, doing a side hustle? And sure. So, so I always look at anything that I do as, as a long-term sustainable venture. And I think a lot of people don't, don't put enough thought into their planning and strategy. So there are four core foundational pieces that I have learned from working with, you know, thousands of, of businesses in pretty much every industry you can imagine is you have to have a plan and strategy in place. So you absolutely need to know where you're going. You have to have your branding and image in place. So one of the things that people get confused about often is what a brand is. They think they're just going to have a logo designed and voila, they have a brand and that's not true. Your brand is actually the promise that you make to the world. And it's every single touch that your business makes. So it's not only the visual images, it's your words, it's everything else. So rolling into that, one of the other foundational pieces that you must have in place is your copy and your messaging. You have to be clear about what you're saying. And that clarity is so, so important. And of course, in the copywriting arena, that's how I position myself really well by pioneering the process that I teach. And finally, when you have those pieces in place, you're ready to roll with publicity because you've got to get the word out. And publicity is golden. When you are featured in the news or on the covers of magazines or books or wherever it might be, that just adds so much credibility. So if you're in this for the long run and you're not just hoping for a quick fix or going after the low-hanging fruit, as many people coach you to do, then those are the pieces you'll want to have in place to move forward and create long-term business sustainability. You know what, when you talked about the low-hanging fruit, I just have to go there. <laughs> okay, do it. I want to hear what you have to say. Oh, you know, people have told me, you know, Deb, go for that low-hanging fruit. And I learned that the low-hanging fruit were not my customer. And uh, I got burnt um, from, you know, pursuing that long-hanging fruit. I went to a meeting. They said, you know what, Deb, great. Put together the information based on our conversation. You'll have a contract the next meeting. Well, I put together the whole presentation. I lost the presentation and stayed up till like 3 o'clock in the morning, making sure that I had it in place, went to the meeting. One person showed up, so I thought, okay, there's something not right here. And she's like, well, can, can we have your slides? And I oh. looked at her, and I said, not without a contract, you won't have slides. And she's like, well, I still have to show it to someone else. And I realized, you know, in that world that if the decision, and this was my error, is knowing that the decision maker wasn't in the room. I thought the decision maker was in the room. And I had what we call is the Seymour in the room to check things out. And then they go to the decision maker, which really that low hanging fruit. I had approached them on different occasions and now I know it's like, don't even go there. Why am I wasting my time? So I want to hear what you have about low hanging fruit. Oh, absolutely. So oftentimes, you know, in, in the coaching and consulting arena, people will say, well, if you need to make money, just start going after the low hanging fruit. And sometimes those are just, that means you're creating an offer that isn't even really in full alignment with your values and what you want to do, but you can make some quick money on it. Um, and the other thing about that is, you know, it, it doesn't create long-term sustainability. And certainly I understand if people are in a cash crunch, but I, I believe that it's more important to have solid offerings that you can fill in the blanks with. So for example, if I'm not doing, uh, you know, totally booked up with my one-to-one -one coaching and consulting clients and working on big jobs, I'll take a small copywriting job on occasion to make some extra cash, but that makes sense. And that's not really low-hanging fruit. That's just a segment of what I already do that makes sense and isn't compromising my values or the value that I deliver. And so when you're being coached by people and they're telling you, just go for the low hanging fruit, I often tell people, well, I always tell people to flip the script, but I often say flip the funnel, you know, instead of leading people in with, with a low dollar item, why not just go and close a larger deal? It takes the same amount of time. And when you get in front of the decision maker, like you mentioned, then that's exactly where you need to be. 
Now, I actually have a huge heart and I'm very service-based, so I do have offerings that meet people where they are. So I have some self-study courses that are a lesser investment than working with me one-on-one, -on -one, but those aren't, either, those aren't really low-hanging fruit either. They're foundational pieces to get people to where they can actually then invest in larger packages if they want to. So there's some really distinct differences between just creating some, some low-hanging fruit or thinking that you have to go and pitch the wrong people, right? And we all learn. It's, it's a lesson that um, I think every single one of us have stories like you just shared. And I've had people who are really interested in seeing my information as well and wanting to use that as a guideline. And I've had people teaching my methodology and trying to claim it as their own. And, and, and it's very interesting to me. I just, I believe there's more than enough to go around. And uh, at the same time, it's kind, of, it's kind of sad when people can't own their own brilliance and step into that because we all have magic inside of us. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that's the denial about knowing that you have that magic that you need to. And I know maybe they think it's that rinse and repeat if it's something's working, but there's a way to spin it that it's your own. Yes, exactly. And I think that's another really good point because so many people say, well, I don't think I'm going to start a business because everyone's already doing that or multiple people are talking on this subject. And I'm here to tell you that you have a unique spin. Each of us has something unique and special to bring to the world. And you just have to take some time to cultivate that and find it. And also don't just blindly follow gurus. Question everything and check in with your own values and what's going to work for you because that's what it's really all about. And not all gurus are actually walking their talk. So that's another topic that yes. is really important to be aware of. And it's about know thyself, right? Those core values are so, so important. And, you know, if you're not clear on what those core values are, or just look around the way you live your life, those core values should be evident. And I think where people struggle the most is they, they make decisions and make choices based on not their core value. They're looking at as the opportunity or the, the chance to get ahead. And then it puts them out of alignment and then they struggle. It's so true. And what I find, you know, in the work that I do when helping people get absolute clarity on their messaging so they can get out into the world in a much bigger way, is there's a huge disconnect often between our, our personal values and our business values. And that's one of the things that I help my clients do is bring that all back together. So sometimes people haven't even really sat down and done a values exercise to really identify that and give it the energy and space it needs to create a clear really a, a clear guidepost for moving forward and some people simply just haven't reviewed them for a while and, and that's also well that can be detrimental because we grow and evolve and as we grow and evolve our values will change and expand our client base will change and expand so we have to evolve as well and make sure that we're either a step ahead or meeting people where they are and that everything's still in alignment so one of the biggest kind of aha moments that people have is when they realize oh my gosh, I've really segmented this business piece off into its own little compartment and not really putting my heart and soul into it. And I remind them, listen, business is actually personal and you need to get in enjoyment out of it. You need to get satisfaction out of it. And your values equal value. That really amplifies what you're bringing to the marketplace. So without being clear and having all of that in alignment, there's a huge energetic disconnect and oftentimes when people just kind of do that make that small shift and get back into alignment then they see opportunities open up and flow for them and then they have more joy in the work that they do because that's why they went into it in the first place right right so what do you mean by when you think that traditional copywriting and marketing formulas they're not working oh yeah this is, i love this so after I resigned from the ad agency and started studying with the top copywriters out there, I kind of was suffering from a little bit of that, like, who am I to question what's going on syndrome when I was seeing everybody poking at these pain points and, you know, what are the pain points? And you got to list them out and then you got to poke at them and agitate them. And so they were teaching this problem, agitate and solve approach where certainly it's important that we know what the problem is. I'm not denying that. But the approach is you, you, figure out what those pain points are and you kind of poke at them and, you know, make people uncomfortable, get them into a heightened emotional frenzy so that you can kind of swoop in 
like the big hero and make the sale. And that just felt so off to me. And, but I was thinking at the same time, because I'm starting out in this arena was pretty new. And I was thinking, even though I had tons of experience in other parts of, you know, marketing and advertising, this whole direct response and copywriting piece was a little different to me. And so I kind of sat, I was, I was quiet about it for a long time, Deborah, and I was questioning myself and, and wondering why isn't anyone else saying that this is just totally wrong, that we don't have to do that, that people actually want to be um, acknowledged and they really would, would be more um, apt to purchase if you painted a picture of possibility about what life could be like instead of telling them how horrible their life is or reminding them that they might need to lose 10 pounds or whatever that might be as far as the poking at the pain point. So not only did I watch that and observe it on my own, but then I had hundreds upon hundreds of clients coming my way and saying, Lisa, we're stuck. We just spent thousands of dollars on a copywriter or a marketing guru or what, or a sales coach, whatever it might be. And we have all the pain points on our website or our brochure or whatever it might be, but nobody's buying. So I'd have to back them up and teach them to unlearn what they've been taught, tap back into their values and ask a simple question, you know, what, what formula are you using as a foundation to create your messaging? And it was always the problem agitate and solve. And I would ask, how does it feel to you when someone pokes at your pain points? When was the last time that someone really poked at your pain points and you decided, gee, I really want to do some business with this person. So it's a psychological manipulation. And a lot of people use neuro-linguistic programming um, in inauthentic and um, disingenuous ways to, man to manipulate the sale. And what also happens in that container is that it perpetuates return rates and buyer's remorse. So it's not building a foundation for long-term sustainability in creating the messages. So kind of in a nutshell, which wasn't a very short nutshell, but that's that's what I learned and continue to learn. And it's interesting. I had a person say, well, there's scientific studies that show that, you know, 80% of the population will move away from pain. Well, only 20% will move towards their pleasure or passion or what they want to have happen. I said, that's totally fine. I'd rather work with the 20% that are tapped in and enlightened and ready to roll that aren't playing the games. So that's, that's where I come from. So in my work with emotional intelligence, Lisa, what it reminds me of is, you know, when people are in a high state of emotion, whether it be positive or negative, that's where they're dr driving. You know, they say, don't make big decisions when you're totally elated or you're totally, you know, in that fight flight response, right? That negativity, right? But those pain points, those pain points are that high end, but we know that that's how marketing works. You need to, because people buy based on emotion. And how much better would it be for them to start seeing the dreams, start seeing the vision, start seeing where they want to walk to. Yet research shows that if you create that vivid vision, that you can walk toward it. Right. And I, I think um, also a lot of what's built into your pleasure points is um, I, some of the work that I do with appreciative inquiry or using a, an appreciative inquiry approach to help people discover and dream of the possibilities, creating the destiny of where you're going, that destination. And I really love that. Yeah, thanks so much. So that's actually how I landed on, you know, learning what wasn't working for people and how they were really, you know, disconnected and, and realizing that when they had a website full of pain points that people just weren't buying. And I thought, you know, I just need to break this down and simplify it for people. And I, and I explained, look, if you can talk, you can write. Certainly there, there are tips and techniques that professional copywriters use, and I, I teach some of those as well. But the basics are get, get back to the level of just having a conversation with who you're meant to serve and be really clear about that. And also, you don't have to, pay, you don't have to poke at the pain points. So what I do, certainly we want to know what they are because we want to meet people where, where they are with empathy and understanding. So we, what I, how I flip the script in my whole framework is the challenge, solution, and invitation framework. So we acknowledge that challenge with empathy and understanding. We know where people are, and they're like, oh, cool, this is great. This person understands me. So instead of making a person feel really horrible about themselves, just acknowledge, hey, I know where you are. And then you can roll into the solution piece, which is how you can solve that problem for them or address that challenge 
and you share what it is that you have to offer. But within this solution piece, this is where you get to paint the picture of possibility. And you also need to provide some social proof. So some results on how you have flipped the script or gotten results or whatever it is, help people make more money, whatever you're doing in your business, so that you're in this solution piece sharing not only who you are, what you do, how you've helped others, and painting that picture of possibility about what life would look like if they did business with you. So in that second step, you basically just equip people with the information they need to make an educated buying decision, and then you can naturally and gracefully roll into the invitation piece and say, does that sound good? To you, let's take that next step, whatever that next step might be for you. So it works in conversations. It works on your website. Instead of a giant buy now button, you can just say, you know, schedule your appointment today. You could be a little softer and treat it like the relationship that it really is because marketing, advertising, and sales are all truly about relationships and building those relationships. And I think that's one of the things like the pain points takes people away from. It comes at a place of making conversations transactional, doing business transactional versus the relationship marketing. Yes. Um, because you want people to refer you to them. If they have that buyer's remorse, you're not going to get referrals. You know, that word of mouth is so, so powerful. When, when you think of strong copy, what needs to be in a strong copy to be really effective? I know we talked about, you know, look, painting the picture, but to be in that copy. Yeah, I mean, you just have to be super aware of who it is that you're speaking to and make sure that you're really clear on those results that you want to share. And there's something, something that I think is really interesting that will be helpful to people listening is that there's an old advertising adage that says copy is uh, king. And I actually believe that copy is queen and strategy is king. So they're the feminine and masculine energy of marketing, right? And that's how you bring it all together by being really clear and nurturing in your message and having a strong strategy to get to that message. So not only do you have to be super clear about who you're speaking to and the results that you deliver because people are missing out on showcasing those results. And just because you say, hey, I mean, I could just say, hey, I'm a copywriter and people would be, well, fantastic. So what? Or I could say, I'm a copywriter and a strategist and I help my clients, you know, more than triple their investment with me in one sale when they implement my strategies. And then people are like, oh, well, that makes sense. I'd probably hire you instead of someone who just says I'm a copywriter. So we want to be really clear and we want to really just be creating an easy pathway to say yes. What would be, um, for someone maybe just starting or wanting to take their business to the next level, what do you think needs to be added for credibility, especially when it comes to putting together testimonials? Well, results are always good. I mean, and you should have, you should have them for every single offering that you have out there. So for example, you know, my content strategy plans, I helped one client map out her 90 day plan. Um, actually we did six months for her. I had to think about that. I'm now doing 90 day plans because things move so rapidly. We worked to just really look at all of her revenue streams, where she wanted to go, what she needed to let go of, and then where she wanted to be. And within six months, she was already doing you know, multiple six figures, but within six months, she broke a million, and that was her goal. So that's a really positive um, example. Now, that can also scare people because they're like, well, I'm not ready to you know, break a million or do this or do that. That's okay. Um, it still shows what's possible. And so results like that are great, but sometimes people are in the transformation business, right? And so the transformation is not as tangible as far as dollars and cents. So you'll want to be able to explain, you know, what your methodology or your offerings do to help facilitate that transformation. So for example, when I teach my challenge solution and invitation framework and empower people to flip that script and focus on passion points instead of pain points, I've had clients say to me, in 20 minutes, you removed a block that I had against marketing and advertising for decades because I didn't want to poke at pain points. So they were stuck and couldn't move forward with that old framework or methodology. And when I said, well, you don't have to do that. And not only that, the person in, in um, this instance had a really magical children's bookstore. So there were no pain points. That was about, you know, you know, wonder and curiosity and empowering children to become more interested in reading and that's you don't poke at pain points in that instance so 
hearing that that transformation happened just really, of course, you know, really lit me up because that's what I'm all about. I want people to understand that you can create your message on your terms. You can paint a picture of possibility with passion points. You don't have to do any of the stuff that doesn't feel right to you because when you're doing that, you're going to create that energetic disconnect and it's going to impact your bottom line. So what are the elements that people most struggle with when it comes to coffee? You know, people often just freeze up and there's something about writing that makes people nervous when they're not natural writers. And so I always say, if you can talk, you can write. So I suggest sometimes for people who, who aren't um, able to get that message out when they try typing or writing to speak it and then transcribe it. Because it's so much easier as if we're having a conversation with a person than feeling like it's a task or it's a, you know, something you have to get done. So the, that's some of my best advice. And break it down into chunks. Give yourself time to just pop your ideas into a document, write for a little while and stop, and then go back and massage it. Absolutely. So some of your philosophies have really taken created some wildfire. I know um, Aspire Magazine, Dare Magazine, Inc. Magazine, you know, interview, a lot of attention. Can you tell us a little bit more about how, how this all got started of you getting featured? I can. So, you know, we talked about the four foundations and one of them being publicity. So that's, that was all about publicity. And I'm going to share another really golden gem with everyone. You have to name it and claim it. And here's what I mean by that. I was intuitively um, using my challenge, solution, and invitation framework to help people get better results for a very long time. And then I was asked to write an article about this for Aspire Magazine, and they featured me on the cover, and that was, you know, a real honor. But I had to sit down and think about, you know, what am I actually doing and put a framework to what I've been doing naturally, and that's when I named the challenge, solution, and invitation framework. So... It hit in that magazine, and of course, kind of like you said, it kind of spread like wildfire in a good way. People started learning about it and saying, oh my gosh, this lady knows what she's talking about. This is really cool. So once I named it, it really took on a life of its own, and that's when I was approached by Inc. Magazine. I was interviewed by one of their writers and featured there, and then multiple other magazines and I think now um, my philosophies are featured in about seven number one best-selling books I'm working on my own right now but it's really an honor to have people reach out and say you're really on to something can we feature this in our book you know and that's that's what it's all about that's when you know what you're doing is in full alignment and it begins to happen organically so I didn't hire a big PR firm of course I know how to do that myself anyway but this all happened very organically right and it's all about when you're in alignment everything tends to flow and opportunities, not just possibilities, start coming your way. Yes, very true. It's very true. And again, just the energy of naming it, because oftentimes when we are in our magic, we're just doing it. We don't even realize because it comes so naturally. So really, it was a, it was a golden gem to name that, because once it was named and people could wrap their mind around that framework and say, oh, gosh, I see what, what I've been doing. I've been taught to do this problem, agitate, and solve thing which is totally not in alignment with my values or where I'm going with my business. And I can just flip the script and use the challenge solution and invitation framework, meet people where they are, showcase my uh, talents and solutions with grace and ease, and then extend a super friendly, easy invitation to go to the next step and get more business. Beautiful. Beautiful. So for people who are coaches, speakers, entrepreneurs, how important is you know, naming a framework, because I know it gave you opportunities, but declaiming some of that intellectual property. Yeah, well, that is an important thing. So intellectual property can be sticky. We talked a little bit before about people trying to mirror what you're doing. And so definitely you want to own, your, own that, make sure that you're copywriting everything that you do. And then when you also, like your business name, for example, you'll want to make sure that that's trademarked. Um, to protect that intellectual property because certainly there are people now that are claiming they've been teaching what I've been teaching for a long time or mirroring that and that's fine because what I have to realize is let go of my ego and know that this is coming through me mm -hmm. and it's meant to change the world it's meant to absolutely shift the trajectory of marketing advertising and copywriting so for me to be really delighted that that's happening but also be really firm in owning that 
you know, the intellectual property around that whole body of work because that is where you can protect yourself business wise when people actually do copy your content word for word or try to try to take it. And unfortunately, some people do that. So I always recommend having a really awesome legal team on hand to confer with and make sure that you're protected in all areas because once you do name it and claim it it's going to get a lot more whatever it is that you're doing it's going to get a lot more exposure and you'll want to make sure that you're protecting those intellectual assets especially if you ever want to sell it sometime because another piece of long-term business sustainability is creating an exit plan at some point you might want to retire and sell your whole business and so having things copywritten and also trademarked and by the way when I say copywritten, I'm not talking about writing your content. It's through the um, copyright and trademark, uh, the governmental entity that handles all of that. So there are two different things. There's copywriting, and then there's which means you, you're writing the content, and then there's having something copywritten, which is the copyright, which is copy R I G H T, copywriting something, and then copywriting is actually copy and writing W R I T I N G. So I share that because some people get really confused about that. And many, many years ago, when my business was still based in Idaho, I had placed an ad in the Yellow Pages way back in the day when those were still a pretty big thing and they can work. But whomever was doing the proofreading decided to change what my business did from copywriting, as in writing the copy, to doing like the copyright and securing the rights of the, the content, which is not at all what I did. But I did learn something interesting. Yellow Pages still were working very well because people were calling me for the service that I had nothing to do with. And I, you know, would just, I would uh, send them to the United States Trademark and Patent Office and they could look into copywriting there. But anyway, just a little aside. <laughs> no, I think it's really important that people get up. Knowing who needs to be on their team um, when it comes to growing a business. You know, in the beginning, I think we all know you feel like the Lone Ranger and you're doing everything by yourself. Right. It's not a bad thing because you learn um, when you do end up delegating that work that you learn when things aren't working. <laughs> it's so true. It is so true. And, you know, that's one of the things that I would also say as far as, you know, creating long-term business success is to definitely align yourself with the right team, even if it's just getting a part-time assistant to help you so that you're in your zone of genius, making the magic that you're meant to make and getting that support that you need. Yeah, exactly. So I want to know, what are the top three books that have influenced your life? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. So The Four Agreements, hands down, my number one favorite. Um, love What's that book. Agreement? Pardon? What's the, well, which one of the four agreements stands up for you the most? Oh, gosh. I love them all, and it kind of depends on the day. But I think always do your best is a good reminder because we can all be so self-critical at times. And so I think that's very important. But I read that book and reread it multiple times and always get something new out of it. And I just started listening to it on Audible as well. So I love that. Um, the other one that I love is The Big Leap. Again, I, I've talked a little bit about being in your zone of genius, and that really is an important book, especially as we're up-leveling and evolving as entrepreneurs and business owners, because we always hit these places where it feels a little wonky and stretchy, and that's when we know we're getting ready to break through into something really big, and we, it's important to lift yourself up and really be supported in that as well, and to have like-minded um, you know, either business coaches or accountability partners or whatever it might be to help you through that as well because most of us have, have had those meltdowns before we level up. And so that one was really, really good. And then let's see. Um, oh, totally, Purple Cow. Loved Purple Cow and anything by Seth is just magic. Very, very cool. Um, the Four Agreement, I haven't read The Purple Cow and um, – the Big Leap, so I'm going to put those on my reading list. But The Four Agreements by far is one of my top, top books. And the agreement that stands out for me is the one about um, not taking anything personally. Whether it be positive or negative, that's still someone else's viewpoint. And I tell you, um, that agreement has been phenomenal. But that's a game changer. Back, yeah, I go back to that book. I go to the consignment stores or the used um, 
you know, thrift shops and I will pick up any Four Agreements book and I'll bring it home because I know I'll be having a conversation with someone and saying, you need to read this. Right. And I also, they have a mini Four Agreements book that I've ordered for gifts for people. Oh, that's super great. cool. And I also have the card deck. That's how much I love it. So I just like can pull a card out and go, oh, good reminder. <laughs> I'm going to have to get that. And now I need to look into the Fifth Agreement. I know I have that, but I haven't read it yet. So okay. it's, of course, I one of my um, passions, of course, are books, and so I have a ton of books that I haven't read yet. And also, I subscribe to Audible, so I'm sort of on a book moratorium to try and get caught up on the stacks that I have here to read, and I have them in every room. <laughs> I think you're my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could be right. <laughs> I have a stack of. Okay, I just got some books from Amazon yesterday, and I'm like. Okay, you're cut off. <laughs> I know, but it's so hard because they're so good, and I just love it. I mean, I love listening on Audible because I can walk in nature and listen and, you know, yeah. multitask in that way, which is beautiful. But there's something about holding the book in your hand and just really, you know, digging in, too. So I, I can totally relate. Absolutely. So one of the other things I wanted to ask, you know, everybody has this way, you know, we hear about morning routines. We hear about people talking about how they structure your, their day. What is one key component that you feel has contributed to your success? Well, meditation is big. And for me, meditation can actually just be everyday things. But it's just being really mindful and tapping in directly to source, whatever you want to call that. God, the universe, totally up to you. It doesn't matter to me. And I don't think that um, God is discriminating in that way. <laughs> when you tap in directly and ask for guidance, that's been the biggest thing for me. And what I realized is that that help is always there for us when we ask and listen. And we just have to remember to ask and listen. And that's kind of one of my, not only is it something that I know amplifies my success, it's something I have to remind myself of all the time because we often think we have to do everything alone and we don't. Yeah. And I know you mentioned earlier, you know, you kind of have a meltdown before you up level. What do you do? Because it was funny, I was talking with a friend yesterday and I was he was giving me these pointers for my website because I'm going through a little bit of a redesign. And I, I, he just looked at me. He goes, you know, I'm just wanting to push you. And I said, yeah, but I feel like I'm ripping things apart and starting like from the very beginning. And he's like, no, you're not. You're up leveling. So I, I'm curious, what do you use when, when you get into that place of meltdown? to recognize that you're up leveling and shifting yourself to a different direction. Cause I know that our listeners and our viewers, they might be in the middle of a challenge and not sure where to go. I would love to hear your perspective. Sure. Well, that's, you know, I think it, it's, it's a challenge for all of us when that's happening and it's taken me some time to figure out, um, when that's going on because there's a natural default in us when things get a little stretchy and scary and are getting ready to change to self-sabotage actually and and this is talked about a little bit in the big leap as well so I think you really enjoy it so for me I just have to really tap into how I'm feeling and be aware of my body which isn't always easy either because we're so busy and on the go taking that time to tap in is a challenge so when I start feeling that really wonky energy and I'm not sure what's going on, I take some time to, to journal, to meditate, to really ask, okay, what's really going on here with me? Because it's, it's fear. We, begin, we begin, get scared, you know, when things are going to change. And I'm going through a lot of that myself right now, so it's a perfect question because not only am I evolving a bunch of things in my write-on creative business, I also went through a really personal healing journey where I focused on healing cancer with love. and um, on the other side of that and doing really, really well, but I've been given yet another divinely guided charge to write a book about healing yourself with love. And so that I feel, even though I went through all of this, I feel very ill-equipped to do that. Even though I get, I've done it, I've been there and I can share and help a lot of people. I'm in that stretchy place. And, and also I'm going to have to do things very differently because the way that I build what's coming next isn't going to look anything like everything that I've done through write on creative. So not only do we need to be self-aware, we need to surround ourselves with the right people, the right coaches, the right friends, the right peers, the right mentors. And, you know, I belong to a local group here 
that's just a peer group from all types of entrepreneurs from starting out to really seasoned to all different industries. And I think it's important to learn from those who are not in our same industry as well, because we'll get all kinds of sparks of inspiration. Thank you so much for that. Because I, I know um, Marshall Goldsmith, he has a book that says, what got you here won't get you there. Right. And I think we need to remember that because I'm like, you know, it's like probably the third revamp in my career, which isn't a bad thing because that face has to change. But I was like, oh, <laughs> it seems like, you know, you think of all of a sudden there's this work and you know you need to do it. Right. I yeah, and this happens all the time. I mean, one of the things that I do with clients, you mentioned your website, is I, I do something called a Manion Marketing Web Makeover, and it's perfect for people who are getting ready to up-level, and they're just a little stuck, because they're like, okay, yeah. what do I do next? Because you've got it all dialed in, right? And every time we revamp our site, oh my gosh, that takes forever. It's no small undertaking. No, so it's, it's not. It's like no, I know, it takes longer <laughs> than you ever, ever imagine. And seriously, even though I help other people do it, I'm, I'm working on that with my own, and it's a challenge. But it's so important to get that fresh perspective and have someone look at your overall strategy and your individual page strategy, especially if you've got the right guide and mentor who has that intuitive vision and can see where you're going, which is one of my gifts. And I, you know, your friend's saying that he wanted to push you. I get that because sometimes when clients come to me, whether we're working on their your, their web copy and messaging or, you know, a manual marketing web makeover or whatever it might be, just mapping out their strategy, I can see super clearly where they're going and they're just getting ready to skyrocket and up level and it scares them sometimes. I've had someone, you know, I listen really intently when I have my sessions to capture the messaging and help, you know, dial that in for people and I've had people when they see the vision get really scared by it and, and have to table it for a while and then come back to it and say, you know what, you were right, I was just scared. And it's, a, it's kind of a fine dance to do because you want to help people right where they are. But when you see they're just getting ready to do that up level and get to that place where they're going to eat, help even more people, you've got to give them a little nudge. Yeah. And it's very, very exciting. Very exciting at the same time because you have glimpses of the next coming events, right? Yes. So Lisa, we're almost at here at the end of the interview. I would love for you to share how people can stay in touch with you, uh, connect with you, maybe do some work with you. It would be wonderful for you to just, and leave us with some final words of advice. Sure. Well, first of all, I would love everyone to become a member of the Write on Creative community if you're interested in learning how to flip the script and focus on passion points. Uh, you can do that by visiting writeoncreative.com, which is W-R-I-T-E-O-N-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E.com. You can grab your free copywriting action plan there. And if you think you already got that dialed in and you just want to have a conversation and do some work together, send a message to my team. Just say, hey, I heard Lisa on Deborah's show, and send an email to support at writeoncreative.com, and you'll get expedited into the queue to have a conversation with me. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And final words of advice, Lisa? My final words of advice are just be true to you. Seriously, own your magic and get out there and share it because the world's waiting. And if you're feeling stretchy, it just means you're getting ready to up level. So make sure you get support to do that. Time to skyrocket. Yes. I like it. I like it. Thank you very much, Lisa. It was a pleasure having you on the show. I know we'll have you featured back as a guest, especially with that new book that's going to be coming out that you are now birthing, because um, that book totally is birthing. Yes. Um, and it, it does, uh, it shifts you, it shifts the way you think about things. And uh, um, a mutual friend of ours, actually Karen Rowe, I'm having her on the show here very soon to talk about that, that process too. Oh, she's wonderful. She's yeah. so wonderful. That'll be great. I can't wait to hear her. Yeah, it will be amazing. Just like the interview we just did with you. Folks, you need to stay in touch with Lisa Mannion. She is a phenomenal, gifted, intuitive copywriter, has amazing perspective of how to take you to the next level. So please go on over to her community, sign up, learn more about how you can focus on painting that picture of possibility. You don't need to agitate to get attention. So again, thank you for coming over to the show. We really appreciate when you come to the Millionaire Woman Show. We'd love you to subscribe, go over, write a review, give us a five-star high five, share this with your colleagues and friends so that we can help people get to the next level because really it is about living rich, 
from the inside out. But you need the, the fundamentals in place in order to get there. And also go over to my website at debrakazowski.com. That's D-E-B-R-A-K-A-S-O-W-S-K-I.com. And as Muhammad Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And my message from Lisa and myself is to go out and have a great day. Take care, everyone.